Hey everyone, it's Joshua Davis here from Hit Film. A load of you have been asking for this, so this is our muzzle flash tutorial. We're going to be looking at this footage here from Prism by Corridor Digital. So in this footage, Jimmy Wong is firing the gun, and Corridor Digital have added on loads of great stock footage of muzzle flashes and smoke. But what if you don't have that stock footage? What if you want to create these effects within Hit Film itself? So here's the footage of Jimmy Wong with no effects, and on the right we have it with the effects created in Hit Film. We've packaged this all together into a zip that you can download, so you can really see what we did to put this together. Let's jump into the composite and have a look. Now if we switch off all the layers apart from the background, you'll see how different the original footage is from the effect that we're trying to create. Now in the grading of this footage, we did a few things to make it look a little bit more like Prism, a little more film-like. First, there's this ambient flare that goes across the screen. And then the final grade where the blacks are crushed, there's a little of alteration of the colour, and we've also added on a letterbox. Finally, all the lights in the background have a glare that emanates from both sides. This is true of a lot of the exterior footage in Prism. When it comes to the muzzle flash, if you talk to the guys at Corridor Digital, there's something they'll tell you is it's all about the detail and the layers. If you just grab a muzzle flash and chuck it on, it's not going to look good. It's about how it interacts with the environment, and it's also about what extra bits and bobs you add in, like smoke or sparks coming out of the gun. Really, these layers of detail are what sell the effect, and it might not be truly realistic, but when it comes to visual effects like this, you're just trying to sell it to the audience, and you're trying to make it an interesting effect, and make that shot look exciting. So bear this in mind when you're trying to create muzzle flashes. So let's add the muzzle flash back in and have a look at it. Well, as you can see, our muzzle flash also has an ambient light around it. What we've also done, if we switch them on, is create some grade layers one of which just brightens up the frame, the second of which actually brightens up the background in the areas that are closest to the muzzle flash. This is really great for selling the effect and making it look more realistic. It's really important to note that a muzzle flash only ever lasts one frame. Sometimes you can't see them at all when they're actually blank fires. So unless you've got something like a shotgun which is spitting out debris, you really only ever want it to last one frame the ambient light effects, sometimes they can last two frames, but never really more than that. What we've also added is smoke. As you can see on this first shot, we have smoke, but we don't on the second, and then we do on the third again. And it's important to note, as with all visual effects, you need to make something that looks right, rather than something that is necessarily realistic. We've also added sparks here on the second shot, but on none of the other ones just because it makes it a little bit more dynamic and more interesting. So all of these elements that we're talking about were actually stock elements inside Prism. So if you have something like Action Essentials 2 by Andrew Kramer, then you're in a really great position to just chuck this stuff on and have really great looking muzzle flashes. But if you don't have that, you can actually use the powerful features inside Hit Film Ultimate to create these effects for you, and that's what this tutorial is going to be looking at. So what I did was actually create some stock footage inside Hit Film. So for the muzzle flashes, I created a new composition and then built my muzzle flash inside of that and then just used it as a piece of stock. As you can see inside my muzzle flashes composition, all I've done is use a preset that was already in Hit Film, the Beretta Low Light preset. So I dragged this on and combined with some lens flare, I created this stock that changes on every single frame. So let's go ahead and create that again. Go to New and create a new composite shot. Now let's call this Muzzle Flashes 2. So now what I did is I went and found that Beretta preset which is under the 3D effects. Here it is. I just dragged that on. It asked me if I want a camera. Of course I do. Now, as you can see, here's the effect. It's very, very full on and not really like the kind of effects that I created. So I have made some adjustments here. We're trying to make this comp exactly like a piece of stock footage. So as I know I want my muzzle flash to be going to the left, I'm going to reposition it. So let's change this 180 degrees. And then to make it look more like 
my muzzle flash effect, we're going to have to change some of the settings. As you can see, this one looks a bit more fiery. So, the settings we're going to change are the intensity initially in both the core flare and the side flare. So let's reduce the intensity down. Now I also want this core to look a bit longer and a bit thinner, so let's increase the length and then reduce the radius. That's looking far more like the other muzzle flash now. So how did I make it so the muzzle flash was different on every frame? So to do that, I go to the first frame and then I expand out the appearance, find the seed, and let's set a keyframe on the seed there. Now let's move to the last frame, 30 seconds in, and let's change that seed to 10,000. Now, every single frame of this comp is going to have a different muzzle flash. Now we need to create this ambient glow around the muzzle flash. To do this, we need to make a new plane. So, go to the new layer, select plane, make sure it's black, and then click OK. Next, we need to use the light flares, and let's drop one of those on. Now as you can see, we can't see the muzzle flash anymore, so we do need to change the blend method here. Let's change that to screen. Next we need to change the position. So go to hotspot position, click on it, it will appear on the viewer, drag that around to where the muzzle flash originates, somewhere around there. We're going to change the type here, I think something more like more like the flashlight LED. Now the colour's wrong, but this is looking much better. So under the global section, we need to change the hue to something a little bit more orangey, matching the muzzle flash. Now this glow isn't going far enough, so we actually need to make it much bigger. Let's reposition it a little bit, and then let's change the scale to make it much, much bigger. That's far better. Now we are going to have some issues here, because this glow is going all the way to the edge of our composite. If we just drag and drop this in and then use the screen blend, we'd get a really harsh edge. So we need to fix that. And the way that we're going to do that is the same way that we're going to be adding on a zoom blur, which is just going to make it look a little bit nicer. So we're going to go to new layer, and we're going to create a grade layer. Now inside this grade layer, we're going to initially just put our zoom blur. And then we're going to reposition the zoom blur to again be at the start of the muzzle flash. We can change the settings on this and you can make it quite extreme. But I think something a little bit more subtle. And it'll just smooth out the flash a bit, make it look a little less CG. And now we're going to take a vignette. Actually, if we take the 720p preset and drop that in, that will already be the right size. Now the horizontal and vertical scale, we need to set these to 1 rather than 1.5. As you can see, now there is no harsh edges on our composite anymore, and this will be an excellent muzzle flash to use. Now back in our main comp, having switched off the other muzzle flash layers, let's add in muzzle flashes too. Well firstly you can see that the background is black again, so we want to change the blend method to an add this time, this is quite harsh and it will look quite fiery and explosive. Now it's all about positioning it in the right place. What we're going to do is use this same layer for all the muzzle flashes. It's going to appear four times. So first what we want to do is reposition it. We can change the length of our layer so it only lasts from the first time the gun is shot till the last. We can then reposition it, but before we do that we need to make sure we set the animate keyframes on the position so we don't overwrite our position every time we move it. So we need to switch on position, scale and rotation and create a keyframe. Now let's move it. A trick here is to use the red line or any of these guidelines to try and line up with the gun. Here you go, you can now drag it over the gun and see that it's in line and then just position it so it feels like it's coming out of the gun somewhere around here. What we then need to look for is some kind of indication that the gun is being fired again. But before we do that, let's try filling with the scale. I think I actually preferred it when it was bigger, but you can very easily change the scale if you need to. 
So let's move forward until we think the gun is fired again. We can keep a look on Jimmy's finger somewhere around. There we go, it's firing again here. So now we need just to reposition, rotate a little, and we can use the same trick. Here we go. That looks pretty good to me. So if we just skip forward and get the other two done very quickly. Here we go. I've done them all now. Now we obviously don't want it just sitting there. We want it to go transparent and opaque. So this is where we keyframe the opacity property. If you go to the frame before you want the muzzle flash to appear, set opacity to keyframing, and then set the value to zero so it's completely transparent. Move to the frame where it fires, set it to 100, and then to the next frame, remember it only lasts one frame, and set it to zero. We can now copy these keyframes and just paste them in position. So you go again to one frame before, then paste it. I'll just paste the others quickly here. There we go. Now our muzzle flash is only where we want it to be. This looks really good. So what we can do next to make things look more realistic is add some ambient light. To do this, we need to create a new grade object. So if you go to New Layer, and then select Grade, in this layer we're going to try and make the scene look like we want it to look when it is being illuminated by the muzzle flash. To do this, we're going to use Brightness and Contrast, and also Color Temperature. So let's go and grab those. First with the brightness, we're just going to make it a little bit brighter overall. Then with the color temperature, we're going to make everything look a little bit more orangey, a bit more like the muzzle flash. My grade layer here is sitting on top of the muzzle flash. We probably want it to sit below. That looks much better. The next step is to mask this so it only appears where we want it to. First of all, nobody likes masking, so let's make sure we crop the layer to just be the region where we need it to be. Next, take the pen tool and just create a simple mask like this. Now we don't need to keyframe every single frame, but we do need to make sure we put on the keyframing within our mask, so expand out the mask, find the path property, and switch on keyframing. Here we go. Now just move through a couple of frames reposition, scale and perhaps rotate your mask until you feel you've just got this lower region here below the muzzle flash covered by the mask. I'm just going to do this quickly and skip forward a bit. Okay now that I've got this masked well as you can see it's a pretty ugly mask so we're just going to do a couple of things to improve that. First in the roundness we're going to increase this just make it a little softer and then we're going to feather it and that's basically all you need to do to create this nice light area below the muzzle flash but of course it's there all the time when we only want it when we have the flash so again we're going to animate the opacity go to a frame before the flash switch on animate set it to zero go to the frame with the flash set it to 100 then actually not the frame after but the frame after that we'll set it back to zero again this means the flash that we have in the ambient surroundings, that, that will last a little bit longer. It looks quite nice, it may not be realistic, but it does work. So let's just copy and paste those keyframes as we did before. There we go. This looks much better now, and it's helping sell the effect. It makes it part of the surroundings. But the thing that we are missing is the smoke. So if we open my Smoker 1, as you can see, there's two particle simulations, and we've also got some grading kind of blurring it at the end. One of the particle simulations is shooting forward along with the bullet, and then the other one is like hot smoke rising upwards. Let's create that again. Let's make Smoker 3, so new composition. Let's call it Smoker 3. Let's uh, drag on a particle engine. We're going to try and make the smoke that rises. As always, the basic particles, uh, well, they don't look like much at all. So we're going to want to change the textures first, and there are some included with your project. So 
open up emitters and particle systems and appearance and then let's select the three textures included. Okay this looks a little bit more smoky now but we want our smoke going from the right to the left and raising up a little bit. So we need to make some changes. First of all we need to change the trajectory of the smoke. We want it to come out in a cone so let's move it across to the right and then let's change the trajectory to make it a cone. The next step is to make it go in the right direction. Let's change this by 180. There we go. Well, that smoke isn't lasting very long at all, so we probably want to increase the lifetime to about 2. So we want to go into the movement section. And let's put that to 2. Well, it's looking like a very obvious particle effect at the moment, so we need to make some changes. But let's sort out the smoke drifting upwards first. Whereas you normally use a force to create gravity to make it go down, we can do the same, but just invert it to make it go up. So let's add a force, and then in the type, let's change the rotation Z by 180 degrees, and it will go upwards. But it's far too strong, so we probably want to reduce the strength to just something like 2. That's much better. Now it's all sort of getting to one point and then disappearing and popping. So we want to go into the emitters, emitter, particle systems, and then you'll find the lifetime property. This is really important. So we go into this and then we go to the alpha section. We want to change the type to gradient. Now if we were to put a white color down on the left, a black color on the right, all of our textures will slowly go more transparent and this can work well but we're actually going to change something here we're going to delete the white tab and then mix with appearance we're going to change to first keyframe and this means that while they will always go transparent over time it will use the initial birth property from the appearance or appearance variation the next thing we want to do is make the smoke slow down over time so we need to go to speed and then in that graph we're going to select the second preset the downwards slanting line at the depth we want the smoke to be completely stopped so the speed of zero but this means it's kind of a stumpy smoke so we actually want it to come out faster like it's been shot out of a gun so we need to go to the birth speed and increase that that's much better now all we need to do now is add some variation to make this look far more realistic. So for instance, in the movement variation we can make things live or have different speeds but we'll make the scale larger both in variation and in movement and that will make them all a little less even. We'll make the life variation half a second and maybe reduce our life a little bit. That's looking much better. They die at different times then. The next thing we can do is increase the alpha variation. And that's helping. But I think the whole thing really needs to slow down a little bit and have more variation in the speed. It's looking much better. But very solid, perhaps. I think the next thing we could do is just reduce down the overall alpha quite a bit. Okay, that's looking much more like the smoke we created before. The only other thing we need to do is make it a puff of smoke rather than everlasting smoke. So we need to go to General, Particles, and set a keyframe. Let's set this to 500, and then just a few frames later, set it to zero. So this gives us a small puff of smoke. What we actually want is for the smoke to already exist before the effect starts. That sounds strange, but if we go all the way up here to the general section, then to time shift and put in minus 0 0.1, then we have a real puff of smoke that then disappears. So you can create a very realistic puff of smoke. What I did for the other part of smoke was, well, 
I got rid of the force altogether so it came out in a straight line. I made the cone radius much smaller so it really wasn't spreading out at all. I made it come out faster and then I reduced the amount of smoke. And this will create something ideal to then composite back into your scene. Now the important thing about the smoke is, unlike the muzzle flash, it's going to last for more than one frame. So it needs to look like it's part of the scene, and that requires it to move with the scene, especially here where we have a camera move. The way that we do that is to track a static point in the scene. Now 2D point tracking is coming along really well, and we will be adding it into a big update to the software in the future. But for now, for something like this, it's very very simple to just animate it by hand. So what we have in the middle of the screen here is a bright green point that's about the same distance into the scene as our character and his gun. So if I just turn that point on, you can see that it really does stick to the scene. I didn't even animate every single frame. It was very simple to do, and it really is going to help sell this effect. Now that we've done that, we can actually parent our smoke and other effects onto that point, and they will appear to be linked into the scene correctly. So let's add some smoke ourselves. Add smoker 1 and then let's parent that to that static point. Now when we move around the playhead you'll see that that smoke is actually moving with the scene. This is exactly what we want. Now it's just a case of positioning this in time so we obviously want it to start when that muzzle explodes from the gun and then positioning it into the right place which in this case means we need to not only move it but also rescale it. We can use the same system to line it up as we used with the muzzle flash. If we just scale it down a little bit. There we go. Of course this could probably do with being made more transparent maybe around 60-65% and then you would add this effect or sparks to the other muzzle flashes in a similar way really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial about muzzle flashes please let us know if there's anything else you'd like to know and enjoy playing with the project make sure you check out Corridor Digital's channel they have tutorials there, they have the actual prison movie itself and they really make amazing movies if you'd like to see more tutorials, then please consider subscribing.